Lakeland Public Television presents Currents with host Ray Gildow. Sponsored by Nisswa Tax Service, offering tax preparation for individuals and businesses across from the City Hall in Nisswa and on the web at nisswatax.com. Hello again everyone and welcome to Lakeland Currents. Uh, today we're going to be giving you safety tips that might help save your life, might help save my life. I'm talking with Neil Dickinson who is the Regional Public Relations, uh, Public Information Officer for the Minnesota State Patrol in the northeast sector of Minnesota which covers a very large area from Duluth down to Brainerd. And uh, w welcome to the program, Neil. It's Thank great to have you here. Thanks for and, having me. Uh, uh, hopefully we can talk about some things today that can help save some lives, maybe change some attitudes about things. And I know, maybe you could just talk a little bit about yourself, what, what your background is and how you got into what you're doing. Sure. Um, again, I'm the public information officer for the Minnesota State Patrol in the Northeast region. So I have three districts with the State Patrol. Um, I'm based out of the Duluth District. Um, I also cover the Brainerd District and the Virginia District. So I, again, I have all northeast part of Minnesota. And my main job with the State Patrol is to uh, is have media relations and, and get out um, um, stories or do presentations and, and um, anything that, uh, that incorporates traffic safety. Um, so again, I work closely with the media and if we have attempt to locate, for instance, we have the media help us uh, try to find maybe a, a vehicle that you know that we're looking for or a person we might be looking for so uh, I work uh, very well with the media um, I believe and um, I really enjoy the position. I, I think the thing that interests me about uh, talking with you is that number one the large number of people being killed continually on our American highways and our death rates are going up again in Minnesota for the first time in some time and the headline in the paper this week was uh, there's a potential of 42,000 deer being killed by Minnesota drivers this year. Uh, last year I think there was close to, uh, I think, believe around 190 people killed in those car collisions between deer. And so there's just, it's just a dangerous place to be on our highways and it really doesn't need to be this dangerous. I think if more people would follow the laws. And I can appreciate in your position how these laws are pretty sophisticated, they're changing all the time. So I, I let the pu public know that I told you, you bring notes because I know some of the things we talk about, you can't possibly have all this memorized. But it's, it's, it's just amazes me that if you look at a, a highway with a 55 mile an hour speed limit, people are going 62. They bump that speed limit up to 60 and they're going 65, 67. Right. You bump it up to 70 and they're going 75, it's like, we are responsible. The highway patrol can't be responsible for, for controlling all those things. We have to take control of that. We being older people, younger people, middle-aged people, it's, it's a matter of life and death and we have to really start doing something about this. It is. It's, it's all, and our goal is um, towards zero death. Um, we don't want anybody to die on our roadways in, in, you know, across the nation, especially here in Minnesota where we live. And it comes down to the majority of the crashes um, come down to driver error. Um, contributing factors in why people are getting hurt today is uh, speeding, distracted driving, driving under the influence, and not wearing a seatbelt. Um, those combinations are what I have seen on the road in my 19 years as being a state trooper. Um, I also did crash reconstruction for 13 years, so I got called out to go investigate the serious injury and fatality crashes. So I've seen firsthand what happens when um, errors are made from drivers out on the road. And um, we could be driving and obeying all the laws, but we have to be aware of the other people that are behind the wheel of other cars making mistakes. Um, you know, you talked about the, the car deer crashes that, that we, we're seeing, um, and that's avoiding our distractions inside of the car. We have to be able to recognize something that's gonna possibly run out in front of us or another vehicle coming out in our lane of traffic, for instance, we have to be able to react to that situation and avoid, um, you know, a crash. So, you know, our one of our biggest campaigns now is is eliminate the distractions inside of our vehicles. You know, with the cell phone use that we have today, um, in distracted driving, it's not just being on a cell phone and texting. It's anything inside of a car that's going to take your um, attention away from driving. Putting on makeup, for instance, while you're driving, um, 
changing radio station, you know, talking to the passengers, um, eating while we're driving as well is, is also what we're seeing out there as, as drivers that are doing inside of that vehicle. So we're trying to get that message out to all the drivers to eliminate all those distractions as much as you can and pay attention 100% of the time while you're driving. And it's gonna help you avoid being in a crash and it's gonna also help somebody else from getting injured. I had an opportunity to be fishing with, uh, I'm a fishing guide in the summer, uh, a California State Patrolman from Sacramento. And he was telling me that they do a lot of uh, research on with speed. And he said the average person driving a car down the highway doesn't really comprehend how many feet they're covering when they're going 80 miles an hour. And he said their studies show that that break off is around 70 some miles an hour when you can still control things. But when you get up into that little higher range, you really just lose control. It's almost like you're on ice, even though you're, it's in the middle of the summer. Right. And they're seeing the same things we're seeing, more and more people killed by speed. And they're seeing, I don't know how it is in Minnesota now, but uh, they've, had a, they've lost a lot of police officers pulling people over, trying to take care of the issue, and then getting hit because someone's been distracted. They didn't even see him and, and kill the officer. That's, that's an issue I know for highway workers as well as patrol people. What, what, what are we looking at for the number of deaths in this state? Do you have any idea off the top of your head? Um, as far as, as patrol people getting killed? Or? Um, patrol, I don't have that. I know I, I just pulled up some uh, stats just recently on the number of state trooper vehicles that have been hit. Um, we average anywhere from the mid-20s up to 30 of squad cars that are either at a traffic stop or at a crash scene. Per have, year? Per year in the state of wow. Minnesota that have been hit. I've been hit twice in my career and uh, it can be very scary. Um, the highways, the freeways are a very dangerous place for anybody to be. Um, you know, and it all comes down to being distracted again. And, and we have a Minnesota move over law. Uh, we had a trooper that was killed down in southern Minnesota years ago. Uh, from a, uh, a tr truck driver, semi-truck driver that uh, we believe fell asleep. Um, the trooper was on a traffic stop and uh, that person drifted over, hit the squad car and hit, hit the trooper. Um, so we have, a, um, a, it's called the Ted Foss move over law in Minnesota. And basically what that law says is anytime that a driver sees flashing lights and, and that's either a law enforcement vehicle, ambulance, fire, um, tow trucks, and even construction vehicles, any type of flashing lights that, let's say for instance, are on the right shoulder, and there's a two lane road going the same direction, the Minnesota law says that that driver, if that lane is open on the left side, has to merge over in that left lane and keep that right lane open. If you cannot keep that right lane open, if traffic is that heavy, um, our recommendation in the law says is please slow down and move over as far uh, enough as you can to the left side and give us some room to work on that on that right shoulder, for instance. So that's our Minnesota move over law, and I know we've had some, some extra enforcement campaigns that we've recently been doing, and we're looking for drivers that are failing to do that. And again, that's gonna keep us safe out on the roads, it's gonna mm -hmm. keep everybody else safe. So if you see flashing lights, please, please, please slow down, move over to that left lane, especially with the winter um, season coming up here when the roads get um, covered in snow and there's ice on that road, please slow down because if you see flashing lights ahead of you, there might be a crash, there might be a lane merge, there, you don't know exactly what's going on up there. So if you see those flashing lights, please slow down and, and There's two and be aware. There's two areas I've always really felt concerned about for patrol people, and that's one of them. And the other one, and I've never completely understood this change, but when you pull someone over, you have to walk up to them, they have to stay in the car. And I've always thought that was almost more dangerous than when in the old days we used to have to get out of the car and walk back. What was the rationale for that? Yeah, and I know with us, with the State Patrol, our training is is we want everybody to stay in their vehicle. So if you see flashing lights behind you and you're getting pulled over for a traffic violation or traffic stop, um, please pull over t as far enough as you can off of the road. Um, put your car in park, please, and then have where we can see your hands. Um, um, what's very dangerous for law enforcement is if we can't see somebody's mm -hmm. hands inside that vehicle. Um, our recommendation is to please put your hands up where we can see them. Um, the officer is going to approach your vehicle. We're doing a lot more passenger side approaches because, especially on a freeway or a busy highway, that driver's side area is very, very dangerous for us to walk up and, and um, I guess, conduct business on the road and talk to the driver. Um, we're going to ask some simple questions, you know, for instance, on where you're going. We're going to ask for your driver's license. We're going to ask for, for proof of insurance. 
Um, and then we're just going to just talk to the driver and find out what's going on there. And we're trained to look, you know, for impairment, for instance, on, on anybody that we stop. We're looking for any signs maybe of a distraction or if that person's impaired. You know, and that's, that's one of our main reasons, too, on traffic safety and what we're looking for is to get impaired drivers off of the road. And our main goal is to keep everybody safe. And, and so look for, we're going to be probably coming up on the passenger side. And, um, you know, we're going to ask you for that information. Um, typically what we'll end up doing now is we're going to go back to our patrol uh, vehicle. We're going to run the driver's license. Um, we already ran the license plate information, so we're going to have the information already on the registered owner of the vehicle if it's a Minnesota license plate. So we're going to go back and make sure that that, that driver is valid and, and um, if there's any warrants or anything else for that driver. And then we're going to approach again either with a warning on a triple, typical traffic stop or a citation. And again, we're, we're there to educate the motoring public um, on maybe a possible violation or anything else that, that we've seen. And, what, what made us stop that vehicle in the first place. I have a relative who drives a semi, and he said, you can't believe what you're seeing when you're in a semi, including people changing clothes, yeah. a driver changing clothes, and like you said, putting on makeup, uh, reading, you know. It, you you met, touched on this a little bit, but you said there are five major reasons that people get in a crash. Could you just kind of review those? Yeah, um, in fatality crashes in the state of Minnesota, um, Department of Public Safety um, compiles all these, the records from all the crash reports that come in statewide from law enforcement agencies. And on, on our fatality crashes, the number one reason why people are dying is speeding. Um, and this, of course, is, is the investigation from the law enforcement departments. Failing to yield, um, let's say at an intersection, somebody maybe went through a stop sign or uh, a red light, for instance. And then number three is driver inattention. You know, again, with your cell phones, mm -hmm. anything else that's in that vehicle. And I really think that that's a lot higher because that's underreported. Because it's tough for us in law enforcement to prove that somebody was distracted and caused that crash unless they admit to us or with a serious injury or fatality crash and we're gonna do an investigations, we're gonna grab or we're gonna tr or try to obtain the cell phone from the person, the driver, and we're gonna look into that phone, maybe try to obtain um, cell phone records either with owner's consent or a possible search warrant. And um, we're going to uh, obtain those records. And, and again, we're investigating on why this crash happened. So we're gonna look at, at see if they were on their phone, if they were texting, if they, uh, uh, anything else that may be inside of that vehicle. Um, number four on the uh, fatal crashes is chemical impairment. Uh, driving under the influence, and that's not just alcohol. We're seeing a lot of um, other Possible medication, you know, illegal drugs that are in a person's system. Opioids or whatever. Yeah, we're seeing, you know, it's starting, we're starting to see a lot more of the, uh, um, I guess, driving under the influence without alcohol. Um, but what, then you start mixing that with alcohol, it can be a very dangerous situation. So a lot of uh, the officers today now, I know um, I'm one of the instructors with standardized field sobriety tests for uh, law enforcement with the state patrol and with the new um, law enforcement officers that are coming on. Um, and that's one thing that we're really, really um, touching on and trying to teach the new law enforcement officers is um, if you don't sense or smell alcohol or, or, you know, with a preliminary breath test, there's nothing that comes up on it. That doesn't mean that they're good to go. Um, it could be prescription medication. So um, we're training our officers now to look for that other type of impairment. And uh, what's going to happen from there if, if the officer feels that after the standardized field sobriety tests that are given to the driver, if they feel that um, they're under the influence, they're going to be arrested at that point, and they're either going to be taken back to the county jail, given an opportunity to give a breath test if, if the officer uh, senses alcohol. If they think there's something else that's um, possibly another impairment, um, we're going to ask for a blood or a urine um, a sample from that person as well. So, and now with that, you know, we're required now to get a warrant if, if we're going to ask that person for a blood draw, um, we're required now to, to obtain a warrant. Wow, that's a lot of extra yeah. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of it's a it's quite the process now right. to to process a, a driving under the influence. Um, wow. Yeah, but you know that's our main mission, especially with the state patrols. We want to take those people off of the road before they hurt themselves or mm -hmm. someone else. It's amazing how many times a year you'll see someone who was in a bad traffic accident who really doesn't even have a license anymore but they've just been out there Ill illegally driving. Right. Um, what should a person do if you run across road rage? 
that um, our recommendation is to call 911. I know a lot of people think that 911 is for emergencies only, and, and definitely that's what it's set up for. But I always remind people and ask and, and, and try to educate people that if you see somebody, for instance, that's going over the center and fog line, and they're just driving uh, you know, erratically or very dangerous, please call that in. Um, call 911, either you're gonna get the state patrol dispatch or you're gonna get your local sheriff or police and uh, report that. And what the dispatcher is gonna do is ask you to stay on that line um, for us, if especially, and then update the dispatchers. The dispatchers are gonna put that out. Let's say the state patrol gets that call. The county um, sheriff's department and the local city officers also monitor us, we monitor them. We work together as a team out there and we're gonna do our best, even though it's a state patrol, county or city, we're gonna do our best to get that car stopped and we're gonna investigate that driver and make sure that they're not impaired um, or if they're impaired, you know, we're gonna take the next step and, and at least get them off of the road. One of the things I read was don't look at them, don't stare at them, try to get out of their way. Right. But don't get back into a tit for tat kind of environment. Yeah, let's see, we're talking about road rage. If, <clears throat> if that happened to me in my personal car just a couple weeks ago. Really? Yeah, and uh, um, <laughs> it's where a person came up and they were right on my bumper. And what I tell um, people to do is, if it's very, it comes a very dangerous situation, go to the right shoulder, let them go by, um, which I did. I let the car go by, I pulled back into the lane, they started to slow down in front of me. Really? So um, what I do is get a license plate and, and I called uh, 911 and, and reported it and uh, we got that vehicle stopped. Really? And, yeah, it's not worth it. We And I always tell people, you don't know who that other driver is, who you're dealing right. with. It's not worth it. No. Um, if that happens, please call 911 and uh, we'll do our best to get that car stopped. Give the dispatcher updated information on your road that you're on, your location, um, if that car continues to, uh, I guess, have road rage with you, know, with you, is keep that dispatcher updated and one of us will do our best to get that car stopped. That's becoming more common. Unfortunately, it's becoming more common. People are in such a hurry to get to the stop site and sit there just a couple cars ahead of you, but it's really becoming very common. Let's just talk a little bit about the zipper concept of coming into the freeway from a side road. I know a lot of people are still a little confused about how to do that. Right. On, on well, zipper merge, for instance, uh, um, Minnesota Department of Transportation, we see a lot of the zipper merges at a construction zone, for instance where there's, it's down to one lane, and it's the same concept when you're coming in off of a, a, a ramp. Um, let's say you're going up to a construction zone, for instance, and it's two lanes, and it's gonna go to merge to one. Let's say it's gonna merge that left lane. We want everybody to use both lanes um, when you're coming up to that merge, especially when traffic's very heavy and can be congested because it's gonna eliminate the backup, and that's when we're getting our crashes, maybe as, uh, around a curve or up on a hill where people don't see that threat in front of them. And then we're gonna get some rear end crashes, for instance, but recommendation, and MnDOT recommends this as well, is use both lanes. And there's a designated merge area, usually right at the sign where it says the merge. And uh, please take turns in that merge. And I know sometimes that doesn't happen and that's where the road rage incidences happen. We've gotten calls in the past where somebody will, for instance, on that scenario, someone's gonna block that right lane and then an argument will take place right on the road and we've had physical altercations, um, you know, um, I personally have dealt with, and, and I personally haven't dealt with it, but I know there's been some instances where somebody's, you know, pulled out a gun, for instance, when it comes to Right on like the highway. That. Right on the highway, yeah. So wow. it can be very dangerous. So if that happens, again, call 911 and report that, and we're gonna do our best to get that car stopped that's possibly doing this. but. Please, move. you go up to that merge, designated merge lane, and take turns in there. I guess Minnesota nice is what we call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that happens, it's gonna help everything. The traffic's gonna flow a lot better, and, and it's gonna just be more of a positive outcome. Do you know what our, our uh, highway death toll is right now, roughly? It is, um, I just pulled the stats this morning on that, and uh, this was uh, from two days ago. Um, we're at currently at 276 fatalities in the state of Minnesota, and we're pretty much right on pace of last year's 278 um, fatalities this time last year. And that's not good numbers for us at all, or the state of Minnesota. Again, we're trying to reduce those numbers, but last year we had 411 deaths in the state of Minnesota. Wow. And that was the highest fatality count since 2010. Wow. So our numbers are going the other way. Even though cars are safer, 
Um, we're trying to get that message out of the distracted driving, don't drive under the influence, wear your seatbelt. Um, it's hard to believe anybody would not wear a seatbelt today. It's, uh, our compliance rate in the state of Minnesota is about 92%, which is good. But that 8% that, that is not wearing their seatbelts, um, we have extra enforcement that we're looking for that. We're trained to look and see if we can see that seatbelt that's mm -hmm. not on. We can legally stop a car now if we see somebody in that vehicle has not seat belted in. So everybody, even in a back seat, has to be legally strapped in. Everybody has to be legally strapped in, especially when we talk about child's, uh, children in the car. They have mm -hmm. to be in the properly uh, or proper car seats, booster seats, um, and, and that's big. You know, I have zero tolerance when I, when I see um, you know, children in a car that aren't buckled or oh, buckled yeah. properly. Um, you know, that, that can be a very dangerous situation for young children. Um, but seatbelts, um, when I did crash reconstruction and then when I investigated crashes, the majority of the fatality, serious injury crashes that I've gone to in northern Minnesota is the one car rollover crashes. Really? Um, yeah. Where somebody's not wearing their seatbelt. And, and think about when a car rolls over, um, the objects inside of a car, another human being inside of that car, when it starts to rotate. Very dangerous situation. The seatbelts are designed to keep occupants in that vehicle in the, where they're sitting and uh, the, your chances increase tremendously if you're wearing a seatbelt and you're involved in any type of crash. So that's one of our priorities in, in, in not wearing your seatbelt um, is a top contributing factor in why people are dying today. Well there's two seasons coming up that are pretty dangerous for all Minnesotans. One is the deer crossing the highways right. and the other is winter driving. Could you talk a little bit, maybe first, about the, uh, how to drive in the deer season? Yes, um, our, most, our motorcycle fatalities, serious injuries have gone up as well in the state of Minnesota. Very dangerous. Um, I've responded to quite a few in my career of motorcycles hitting deer. Um, and the majority of those are, are at, when it gets dark out or right at, at dusk or dawn. Um, be aware, um, look to your left and right and, and be aware that deer, especially this time of year, we're gonna start seeing a lot more of them. They're, they're starting to get more active out in the woods. Um, wear your seatbelt, you know, we've had them where they've come into the car through the windshields. Um, we've seen cars roll over trying to avoid maybe an animal on the road. Our recommendations, if there's a, an animal in the road and you're at high speeds, at highway speeds, is, is try to slow down, um, but Hit make it. sure your steering, yeah, make sure your steering isn't gonna cause you to roll over. And think about that type of situation. If you lose control, you might possibly go in the other lane and, and have a head-on crash. Right. You might roll, roll your car in the ditch type of thing, but uh, our recommendation is just slow down as, as hard as you can. And you gotta be aware of somebody that's, that's behind you as well. Right. And so very dangerous, so watch out. You know, look at the horizon, um, expand your vision when you're driving and look for those. And, and especially in Northern Minnesota, we're seeing a lot of the car, or the deer right now coming out and trying to cross the road or running. Yeah, they're um, estimating about 42,000 deer will be hit this year. They won't all be serious collisions, right. obviously. But, right. Um, and then, you know, last year, I think, like I said, there was close to 200 people killed in those collisions. And some of them were motorcyclists. Motorcyclists, absolutely. And, and, you know, talking about <clears throat> motorcycle safety, you know, state law, um, for anybody that's over 18, is we don't have a helmet law in Minnesota, but I've seen it where helmets have saved lives. Um, please wear a helmet. Um, I know the law says you don't have to, but you have to have eye protection on as well. And then dress for the occasion. Have the, the thicker clothing in case you happen to, you know, go down on the highway. Right. At least you have some sort of protection um, if that happens. And what sort of tips would you give the viewers about driving in the wintertime? Winter, uh, wintertime, uh, um, very, very dangerous situation. Number one, please slow down. Um, when the weather gets, when it turns, and, and a lot of times, you know, you can see that glare on the road. Yeah, it doesn't seem very slippery. It, it's probably ice or the black ice type of situation. So slow down, wear your seatbelt. And one thing I, I really want to talk and hit on is have good tires on your vehicle. I've seen numerous cars that have below the minimum tread depth on, on those vehicles, and, and that definitely is causing people to lose control. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, I know it's expensive sometimes to, to order some new tires, but it, it could save your life and someone else's as well. Wow. So invest in a good set of winter tires. Uh, how many of our, do you know, percentage of our accidents are caused by teens versus adults? I don't have the numbers, but you, just the inexperience, um, you know, of a teenage driver, especially when the winter comes, it's, it's different. 
type of driving, slowing down. And we gotta remember the speed limit might be, let's say on the freeway, 70 miles an hour. If it's slippery out there, it's snowing hard and visibility is down, that speed limit isn't 70 it's anymore. It's, it's Yeah, it's drive with due uh, care is what basically the statute says. So you can be issued a citation for traveling over the speed limit or, drive, or failing to drive with due care, even if you're under that posted speed limit. So good common sense and have those headlights on if there's any type of precipitation during the daytime. They need to be on then, right? Physically turn those on because the rear taillights might not be active. And, and it's not what you see, it's being seen, especially when the visibility gets down with fog or rain and snow, anything else that's gonna reduce the visibility. So the number one thing coming out of this discussion really is slow down. I mean, so many of our deaths and accidents are caused by high speeds. I had a personal incident happen here about two months ago where a white suburban was coming down a county road and he started coming over the line and I looked at him and I thought, well, he must just have lost his attention or something. He kept coming straight at me. I had to hit the ditch, the shoulder, and I was going 55 and I pulled over. He went by me, he was texting or reading his phone. He never saw me. I watched him in the rear view mirror and he, he went into the ditch and then realized. Right. And I don't think he ever saw me unless he looked in the rear view mirror and saw and me. And again, the stats are at 55 miles an hour before somebody looks up. Average text is maybe three to five seconds. That could the length of a football field wow. before somebody looks that, up. And that's, so that's a that's great distance right. that's covered, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, very, very dangerous situation. So. Wear your seatbelt, slow down, avoid your distractions, don't drive under the influence of alcohol. Be aware of other drivers. Like I said, we could be the safest driver in the world, but uh, it all takes is somebody else to make a mistake and, and something bad could happen. Good information, Neil. We've run out of time, unfortunately. Uh, is there a website that people can go to if they want to look up laws for Minnesota High School? Um, yeah, the website I use is uh, um, dps.mn.gov. Um, it's got great information on there, it has stats, it has recommendations on winter driving. Um, you know, um, any campaign that we have with State Patrol, Department of Public Safety, um, updated laws. I know a lot of times we don't have, especially as adult drivers, there's no way for us to right. get updated on laws. So that's up to us to actually be, be educated and, and know the new laws that are coming out. And, and again, everybody just, um, we want everybody to drive safe. And uh, we're trying that zero toward zero death is our goal. And uh, we're really trying. Thank you very much. Thanks very good me. information. Hopefully this is something that will help all of us be safer on the highways. You've been watching Lakeland Currents where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow, so long until next time.